You know, melatonin is a hormone, and believe it or not, it's made in the brain. It's made in the pineal gland of the brain, and it's got a very powerful antioxidant status compared with vitamins. For example, uh, melatonin is five times as powerful as vitamin C and twice as powerful as vitamin E. And it secretes only at night. And it's at night that we need it because that's when we go to sleep and when our brain repairs the cells of our body. And that's when melatonin comes out to do its work. Each day, our body loses about half a billion cells. And at night, that's when our body replaces those cells. Through a process called cell mitosis, the dividing of cells. And what it's doing is it's mopping up what are called free radicals. These free radicals are really the spare electrons left over from the process of making the energy which we need to repair ourselves in the first place. Each night, as our body repairs itself, millions of free radical cells are created as a byproduct of cell mitosis. These free radical cells attack healthy cells. It is universally agreed that the free radical cell is the main causal factor in most cancer. Our body's main defense against these free radicals is its most powerful antioxidant, melatonin. It passes into the bloodstream and its job is to act as a natural antioxidant, a natural anti-cancer agent. Melatonin is a very, very powerful uh, anti-cancer agent. What it does is it, it acts as a, a, a what's called an oncostatic agent, that, that is it protects you against cancer. Um, it controls the sleep-wake cycle so that you get a good night's sleep when you've got proper melatonin. It's an anti-aging uh, molecule, in other words it, by mopping up those free radicals it leaves your skin and complexion uh, looking younger. We have in our lab 12,000 studies, which we've uh, collected over the years. And that is more studies than have ever been published on paracetamol, which is the most common uh, uh, headache reliever. Um, more there's more scientific interest in melatonin than there is uh, in paracetamol. What are the consequences of having a reduced amount of melatonin? Yeah. Well, you have a reduced amount of melatonin, and what happens then is that your immune system starts to be less competent for a start. You tend to get sleep disturbance. You can't get off to sleep, or if you do, you wake up and can't get back to sleep. Um, you can have uh, heart complications because uh, melatonin protects your heart as well. and um, you're much more prone to disease because your immune system is uh, not functioning at its best. So these are some of the things that happen when you have a lowered melatonin level. And for example, the average um, woman with breast cancer has only got one-tenth of the melatonin of a normal woman of her age. And for people with prostate cancer, they've got less than half the melatonin that uh, they should have. Autistic children have less than half the melatonin levels that they should enjoy. Reduced melatonin in night shift workers, because they're working at night and exposed to light, they don't produce nocturnal melatonin, um, is known to produce a 50% increase in breast cancer risk. And the International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC, has actually classed uh, night shift work as a class 2A probable carcinogen because of this melatonin uh, reduction. There are lots of studies now showing that people on, on night shifts or 
people who are blind have different cancer rates than uh, the average population. And, and most of those studies support the view that the absence or the uh, lowered melatonin has an adverse effect on health. Because the body only repairs itself at night, melatonin is only produced when the pineal gland senses that no light is present. What happens is that the pineal gland is light sensitive. It's sitting right where your brain uh, receives signals from your eyes, that crossover point in the middle. It's called the suprachiasmatic nuclei. And the, the, the connections from there goes directly to the pineal gland to tell it whether it's, there's any light around or not. If there's light around, then there's also interference with the signals the brain wants to sell send to, to our cells in order to repair them. So it says there's no point in the brain sending these signals out to our cells to tell them to repair because there's so much interference that they won't hear it. So it waits, the brain waits until it's dark. Melatonin production from electric fields, magnetic fields, radio waves. Right, well, the, 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 the Battelle Institute in America uh, has done a lot of work on this way back from the uh, uh, late 1970s, in fact. Um, and their uh, scientists there, Barry Wilson and Dick Stevens and people like that, started thinking that because we know that if you turn the light on, then the brain stops making melatonin, they thought, well, maybe our brains can't distinguish between electric fields and, uh, that we make ourselves artificially or, and the natural light that we all know it happens during the daytime because we just don't make melatonin in the daytime um, for very good biological reasons. So they thought, well, maybe these electric fields are suppressing the synthesis of melatonin and that that in turn is leading to cancer, breast cancer particularly, in women because they don't have the immunological protection that they would otherwise have. So the brain interprets radio waves as being light waves? Yeah, we don't know the difference.